another episode of Wine After Wines. This is Janae. And this is Naja. And welcome back to another episode. Yes, come back in, come back in, y'all. We got a good show for y'all. What are we like? This is the last Monday of November, yeah? No? Oh, yo, it is. November just started Mm -hmm. a week ago. Mm -hmm. A whole week ago. So, y'all, welcome to the last show of November. I know November, like she said, j- blew by. Um, and we just had Thanksgiving. And let me tell y'all, I made my very first Thanksgiving dinner solo dolo hey. for my family of four for this past Thanksgiving. And How when I tell it? you, I channeled like every grandmama in yes. grandma history. <laughs> My yes. feet was tired. You know how like you go to somebody's house and they had been cooking all day and they be like, yeah, y'all just go ahead. I'm just going to sit down. That's how I felt. I felt like I just wanted to sit down somewhere and like that not enjoy the fruits of my labor. That was me last year. Remember, I did it for the first time last year. I didn't do it this year, but I did it for the first time last year. I had no choice. My mother was out of town. Yeah. She's in Michigan. And then my dad, he came over and then he had to hit the road like early the next morning. So I had to like make sure everything was cooked by a certain time. So I'm like, whew. But this year, my girl sent me a picture of that plate. I, I leave my screen a little bit. I, I do like, leave my screen. I'm like, mm-hmm. To be honest, I'm really like, I mean, look, first of all, I'm Southern. I grew up and I was born and raised in Alabama. Like, I should know how to do something. Well, you did that. From, like, watching my grandma and everything. But I did. I'm proud of myself. I'm really, I really am proud of myself. Like. That plate looked good. I don't know. I surprised myself. Now, I got to go back and redo my dressing, though, because my dressing went exactly like my grandmama's. But Drew was tearing it up like it was good. And I was like, it's all right, but it ain't it ain't what I was going for. So I'm gonna have to go back and redeem myself with that one. Let me tell you something about your husband. <laughs> he gonna make you feel good about your food, regardless, bro. No, he won't. Like, he ain't man, Drew. Listen, Drew will come. Drew have been to many events, and including mine. <laughs> if it's good if it's good he gonna give you your props and you gonna know it but if it's trash you also gonna know it i don't want to know if it's trash because he drew will make you feel good about some food bro (laughs) yeah he'll also make you feel bad about it y'all ain't hurt y'all ain't had well good good you ain't had trash food yet because he'll definitely let you know but um speaking of like the role that I had to play this Thanksgiving. Um, that's kind of what our topic is about. And this one is a little bit for the ladies, but fellas, don't go away. Don't go away. Don't go. Don't go away. Don't touch that dial. Ooh, this ooh, one ooh. you can you can learn a thing or two from us today. So the day. But you know, this this is the okay. So we as women, <laughs> we realized I had a conversation with a friend. Um like two weeks ago, a week or two ago about this same thing, about how many uh, hats and how many roles we play as a woman. Mm -hmm. And um, we're going to break this down for y'all today, because just in case you don't remember or you don't know, you fellas, then we're going to break this all the way down. So you want to get started? Because this one pertains to you, because... we go. I'm like Tommy off of Martin at this point. So go ahead. She y'all don't pay no attention to her. But like she said, we definitely wear many different hats. Um, and the first one I'm gonna start off with, just this is me starting off with it, is co-worker. This is a co-worker. Um, this can go for like co-worker slash boss, however you know you fit in. But you play a role as a woman as a co-worker, like how do you act towards your people at work? Um, for me personally, I am known for being super nice, super helpful. I am not tooting my own horn, but that is how I am. That is how my hat is worn as a co-worker. I'm a very hard, hard worker, no matter what I do. 
I'm going to work my tail off. And she says that's pertaining to me, but that also pertains to her because I have worked with Janae and I have learned a lot from her. Um, not just not saying that I'm not <clears throat> before her, I was not a hard worker. I definitely was. But she taught me things. She taught me how to be nice, nasty. Yeah. I don't lie about that one. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that is That's one thing life. I picked up from you and another coworker we used to have. I'm not going to use her name, but, and it's not who you think it is, but I have learned this from them, how to be nice, nasty. And I'm going to tell y'all a little, so I'm going to give y'all a little secret. Cause I also, I also taught my husband this. I taught my husband how, I don't want to say I taught him, but I had how to be nice, nasty and how to use this in his workplace. Um, you have to, it, it comes in emails and it's not just that per, that word per, like people like per my email, even though she did teach me that one too. Um, you have to learn how to, you got to learn how to um, approach people. You got to learn how to act. You cannot, you cannot act um, upon a situation like you was if you was in the street or if you was at the local grocery store and somebody stepped on your child's toe because it's a different nausea that's going to handle that then a different nausea is going to handle a situation at work mm-hmm. so um yeah like you just I know me I play that role and it's a very important role because of the role I am that I do have at work um I have to I'm many different hands I have to do many different things mm-hmm. so um yeah I am they look to me for certain things. And Janae actually was on the phone <laughs> recently when I had a call from someone who was like having a, a medical issue, um, kind of like a mental medical issue, who was super, super nice person. But I have to play those roles. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. And it's not counselor. a bad thing. You had to be a counselor. You have to be a a therapist a little bit sometimes just a little bit and she and she's fine I mean I'm, yeah. I'm no therapist by any means but we as co-workers have to do that even when you used to do it Janae talk yeah. to yeah so like <laughs> you you brought up some things now I start to remember what my life used to be like when I had when I had You're a job so um girlhood so, <laughs> yeah so for me my role as a co-worker somebody's working with some working I mean I do I guess I do still have working relationships with people I mean you me you and I currently are having a working relationship right and now. um I have a working relationship with my trainer too because I help him with all of his YouTube videos and all of that mm-hmm. kind of stuff so and with Blue Vision Pro Photography because I help him with his stuff so, okay so I do got a little bit of a job somewhere. now now oh. go and tell him how I work <laughs> So when I just says nice, nasty, I'm really going to, I'm going to touch on that just a tad bit, but like as black women, we have to use nice, nasty way more than our white counterparts have to use nice, nasty, because unfortunately, sometimes our voice doesn't get heard. And the reason why we have to be nice, nasty, instead of just pure nasty is because when we come off as passionate, then we're bees, Angry black women, angry black women. Exactly. <laughs> so you have to kind of meet them on their level with the night with the nice. But you got to hit them with the jab with the nasty because you got to let them know you ain't playing no games either. Yep. You're not going to step over me and you're not going to um, I think you could just say what you want to say to me. And I'm just supposed to bow down and say, OK, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Whatever. No, that ain't that ain't how it's going now. So, I, yeah, you you brought that up. So yeah, and it's the know. truth. It's yeah, the truth. Yeah. That is something that I take away, and I use. I will probably use until the end of time. Mm-hmm. If you need some tips on how to be nice, nasty, just call me. Just DM me. Don't call me. Hit us up. We'll give you some um some <laughs> real examples. But um, also for me, I am a huge communicator. Um, yes. Yes. I yes. probably over communicate and. When it comes to my work, I'm very, I'm a perfectionist and I like things to be right. And Mm -hmm. Naja knows I would, (laughs) I would check over things like 12 times. I would change things. I would move things. Like I just, I want things to be right. And um, I also noticed that I'll get into this a little bit later, but how I work is not how I am personally, like with my personal life. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit more messier than like my work life. Like my work life, I feel like is neat in a bow, but my <laughs> personal life outside of that is not as neat and wrapped up. Like when I'm talking yeah. about like 
my role at home. But we'll 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 get into that a little bit later. Yeah. I definitely want to throw this one out before we switch to the next role. Um, even as a as a um, coworker and as someone who works, um, I pay attention a lot to detail. Um, I will get more into that later because I have to do it also in my personal life. But I definitely pay attention a lot to detail as a coworker. So yeah. yeah, definitely, that's something that we have to definitely do. Do that. Do you- <laughs> I was just going to say, do you feel like you have a challenge in that area? A challenge? Um, I think my challenge is going above and beyond. Um, And I know that sounds weird, but I do stuff that's not in my job description. Mm -hmm. Um, I do a lot of things that's not in my job description. And my challenge is actually saying no to it. Okay. And um. That's basically how I see it. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's what you meant by that. Yeah, question. no, yeah. <laughs> so for for yeah. me, um, <clears throat> my challenge I think is just being. I was gonna say being patient, um, is a challenge for me. Being and patient, I, yeah, or being impatient. Being impatient. Oh, okay. Is my being challenge, impatient. yeah. You want I stuff think. right now. You want I just want it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like to wait on people and things. You know, okay. So for example, I was a manager at my in my old role mm-hmm. and we had an admin team. And instead of me getting an admin support to help me, I stress myself out because I'll just do everything by myself. I'm like, yeah. okay. I know how I want it done. Let me just do it by myself. Like I would take everything and just put it on me. And I don't know if that's just being impatient. Maybe I have a control issue. Maybe that's what it is. I think yours is more, I don't think yours is that impatient. Um, I think yours is control, not in a bad yeah. way. Control. Yeah. You just know how you want things. That's just me looking at you because I yeah. know you on a few different levels. So I feel like with you, you're like, you know what? I want it this way. So boom, let me do it. That's how I see you. And so instead of me delegating tasks and having like things spread out to where I can work successfully, sometimes I just pile it all on my plate and I'm like, I'll just take, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. And then I'll stress Mm -hmm. myself out. But yeah, that's the challenge for me. And I need to work on that. (laughs) That's you. I know you. (laughs) I'm going to get better. (laughs) Yeah. I don't think it's impatient. Mm -mm. So... Our roles, uh, we both have siblings. So we are sisters to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the oldest of five kids total. Um, so I'm definitely a sister. And that's a role that I, a hat that I wear and a, a role that I have to play. Um, I'm going to say, I guess I'm going to start with what I feel like I could do better at in this role because I, I can be a, my, my siblings are in different age groups, right? So I have a sister that's 30, about to be 31. I have a sister that is 15, 14, 14. I thought she was 14, but she might be 14. 15. I can't keep up. And then I have a brother that's 12 and then another brother that's 25, six. <laughs> I can't keep up. Um, and they are at different stages in their life and I have surpassed them all. And I just, I feel like I could probably do a better job, especially with the girls um, telling them like, you know, the things that I've gone through, especially my, tw- my teen sister, because because this world is so crazy. Ooh. She knows way more things than I knew at her age, but it's like, I don't know. I should, I probably could be better at being there for her, but it's also stressful for me. So I try, I I like, I like, oh, it's just too much. It's too much. So I kind of back away from it. Is it Um, too much because she's your little sister and it's just too much to see or just too much to like? Both. (laughs) She's like, both. I don't care. It's both. It's both. (laughs) It's too much for me to see and hear. And it's also, 
She's my little sister. I, she's my little sister. And I'm not there yet with my kids. So I haven't prepared my mind to even like know how to have these conversations about what you're feeling inside of your body at that age. And like, yeah, the things, Ooh. the thoughts and the ugh, like, I, ugh, you know, ugh. so I, I, I really thought about that the other day about how I could do a better job at just kind of just being there. Yeah. Because they're at those impressionable ages, and it's like you kind of gonna be who you gonna be. I don't know; it's weird. But with my oldest sister, the one I'm very close with, I don't think I got no issues. That we had, we have a good bond. Like we good. Oh, yeah. Like I, I don't know. I think we're good. Like I, I think I'm a really great sister to my to my um oldest sister. The, well, the one under me. I think I'm a really good sister to her. I could be better with my younger ones under her. Yeah, I think you are too. I think you're a great sister. I do. I'm not if my saying. sister is listening to this, okay. if I'm a great sister, I need you to put a hundred hearts in the chat. Not a hundred. A hundred. Maybe <laughs> put like five. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, that's sweet. I think you're a great sister. I've seen you interact with all of them. Literally. Yeah, all yeah. of them. So I know that you are a great sister. Me, uh, the complete opposite. I am a sister. <laughs> Not like I'm the opposite, but it's just us two. I am the younger one. I have an older brother who's five years older than me. Um, yeah, I mean, we're close. We were closer when we were a little bit younger. And then when we were super young, like we did nothing but fight. Like, yes, he's five years older than me. He could not stand me. I was very annoying. I can't lie. I know it. My son's so annoying to my daughter now. He's me. He's he's me. Like he's I was the I'm not touching you. Yes, I was her. I you still yes, do I, that. Yeah, I do. Listen, but that's not the point. <laughs> we're talking about past. <laughs> He, I was that sister. And to this day, um, now that I'm old, like when we got older, I was the more kind of protective a little bit, like not protective, but like my brother had many, many women in his life. And I was <laughs> right. And I was like, uh, you know, I was like the one who's just like, OK, you know, I was always nice to meet like they can meet me. I'm straight. But then if they do some wrong, boy, I'd I'd be ready. <laughs> I'd be ready. Did I do anything? No, I've always been like, okay, Naja, calm down. Um, but now, like his, I'm actually pretty cool with um the mother of his ch- of his child. Um, the his his recent ex, she she's no longer his, <laughs> no longer his current. I still love her. And then even it was one back then, like my parents just dog sit her. T- her dog <laughs> like a week ago like, it's so funny because but that was my that was my relationship with my brother it's like I was like super protective at one point but then as he got older um we kind of had different lives the way we do things are a little bit different but we're st- like he's still here he was over here the other day eating dinner so we still pretty cool. cool yeah so I mean as a sister I think I I think I'm a pretty I think I I know I'm a good sister. Good. The past is the past. I, you know, I did a few annoying things. I, you know, took a few things out of his room, but that was the past. That was. We should probably get these siblings on to see if we're telling the truth or not. (laughs) (laughs) I know, right? Look, I really try to like analyze myself for real, and I really be trying to think. I try to like be realistic, and I feel like, yeah, I feel like I am. I'm good. I feel like you are too. Yeah, I, I know you're a good sister. Yeah. I see you interact more than you see me interact with my I mean, you've seen me interact with my brother a whole bunch of times, but with yours. Siblings, I interact with your brother too. He might as well be my brother too. Might as well. He just as crazy as he want to be. But we love him. But we do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> the same for your siblings. I love all yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. You can have them too. <laughs> you sure can. <laughs> So but moving got? on to the next one, y'all. So our role as daughters, like we're daughters, we both have our parents. Um, we're both, I know I'm very, very close with um, both of my uh, mother and father. I think I'm not too much of a disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> I have, um, I have not made, I have 
not disappointed them too much at all. I, you know, I think as a daughter, you know, I've done some things in life. I've been arrested before. I was young. I was stupid. I was fighting. Once again, I'm protecting people. This it, it wasn't even my freaking fight. And they were the first people I called. Of course. <laughs> they know me. They know my history. They know I'm not a bad person. Um, so they were like to my rescue like that, like always. Um, I feel like I've <laughs> I, I, I was just let's change this from being a, the the role of a daughter to my parents are amazing. <laughs> Put that with me. <laughs> I yeah. think so. I think I've helped. Like even with my father right now, um, I am like on his case about writing a book, and mm-hmm. I am like, and he really appreciates it. But I'm like seriously on his case. Um, there's something that I'm really trying to have him do because he has a very great he has a great story for his life. And I just really want him to get that out there. I mean, to inspire other people. So I'm like on him about that. And I know he appreciates that. I'm not in it for the money. I want him to definitely get his story out there because it it's a great story. Yeah, it's very inspirational. It's very inspirational. I'm gonna have, we're gonna have to get him on the show soon. I know we yeah. said that before, but I am. I think you guys would love to hear it. Yeah. I want you as a daughter. Um <laughs> oh Lord. What? I don't know. <laughs> okay, so um, unlike Naja, I grew up in a divorced household. So um I was always split between two two parents, but mostly with my mom. So as a daughter to my mom specifically, I feel like I'm a great daughter to my mom. I could be better. I definitely can be better when it how um just being more thoughtful. I could be more thoughtful when it comes to like um hey, do you want to just go to like lunch and grab lunch or giving like a gift or just being selfless, more selfless because it's like as a daughter, I'm so used to her being a mom and giving to us and giving us advice and me calling her say what I what I tell these people when I call them, you know. I'm definitely doing that. Um, <laughs> asking her all kind of questions and just me being a daughter, right? But sometimes right. I feel like I need to reciprocate more with taking care of her a little bit more selfless for that. And, and, and the same with my dad too. Like um, my dad doesn't live um, here. He lives in Alabama still. So I could call more. I could visit more. Um, It don't take that long to get there. I mean, I really could just Uh go visit more. Um, and the same things like, hey, dad, I haven't talked to you in a while. Like you want to go do whatever he likes to do, <laughs> which right. is not go out to eat like my mom would like to do. Wait, my dad probably want to do something like fish or something, you know, <laughs> like got to go do that with him, <laughs> you know, but I'm sure he would appreciate the time spent. So as I get older, I'm learning. I'm learning that I should kind of care for them more because they're getting older. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I totally agree. That is something that I can do myself. I can care more. Like, I feel like I do, um, I do things for my parents, but like you said, more, less selfless, like, um, getting, getting them to like taking them out to eat. Like we do. My husband actually suggests it a lot more than I do. He's like, you think your parents want to go out to eat with us? And I'm like, oh, no, they probably at home. They probably doing that. Like, and, and that's just me because I kind of know my parents. I know they're more chilled. Um, they like to do stuff around the house. If they do stuff, they on the plane somewhere. So mm-hmm. that's, you know, I can't do that. I ain't putting y'all on no plane. I got no money. But um, <laughs> one day. <laughs> one day, right? One day. No, and I do want to be like that one day. I want to be able to like treat my parents to a vacation or something. But yeah, as a daughter, I think um, I think you you are a great daughter as well Thank as you, myself. I mean, I'm all right, I guess. <laughs> I had a few disappointment hiccups along the way, but you know, you know, I don't know what the I don't know what my parents they forgive are. me. 
My parents had me so young. They were 16 and 17 when they had me. So I feel like at least I turned out to be, I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't, my mama didn't want me to be a teen mom, but like her. Mm-hmm. So boom, I surpassed that. I didn't do that. I think you did good. <laughs> you and you and your sister. Y'all were yeah. both like trophies for her. Like I think for her and him, you're both your mom and your father. So. Yeah, they did a really good job raising us though, for them to be very, very young, be very young and immature. I will say that they, they did an amazing job. They had, they raised really two good girls. I I mean, mm-hmm. clap to them. I ain't gonna lie. Cause I was not like a bad child at all. And my mm-hmm. sister wasn't either. Like they really did a good job. I just hope that I can do that same job with my kids and I don't mess them up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you ain't gonna mess them kids up. Them kids, they so smart. You ain't gonna mess them too up. I'm not trying me. not. I'm <laughs> trying not to. Lord have mercy. But yeah. Okay, I- so let's talk about your friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good friend. What would they say about you? She crazy. <laughs> Is that, can we leave it at that? No? No. Okay, well, since we can't leave it at the fact that I'm probably the crazy friend of everybody. You who, think so? I doubt it. I think I am kind of crazy. You're not the crazy friend out of your friend group. You don't think so? I don't have too much. <laughs> Name your friend group. They I'll do. wait. <laughs> Tiana. And those are my separate friends. And then pretty much you. So out of Day and Tiana and me, who the crazy friend? And you. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm the more con- I am the more level. <laughs> Yo, now that you say that, like out of them two, I am super level. Like I'm the chill, I am the chilled one. I'm the one, yeah. Yes. I take back what I said about being crazy. Yeah. Now, when it comes to you and I, yeah, no, you might take that too. You know, I actually am the cool chilled one. Yes. Now, now it's 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 all coming to light. This is this is now we're getting to the nitty gritty of things. Now mm-hmm. I I'm glad that we're starting to admit that. Now, um, let's let's talk about you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Janae as a friend. Tell me, I can be I can be, and I'm gonna be honest. I can be annoying AF as a friend because. I feel <laughs> because silence, silence, silence. <laughs> First of all, I'm a great friend. Number one, you are. I'm gonna get that out of the way because yeah. I know for a fact, and I've said this plenty of times that if I call you my friend, then you're my family, and I really and I will treat you as such. I am loyal to the core. Okay, yeah. like if if you if if I like you. And there's a, a like, there's mutual likes going on. Some mutual stuff. Then, <laughs> stop. Am I making, okay. then like, I got your back. Like, I'm a ride or die type friend. Now, I ain't going to go to jail for you, sis. So that's a different thing because I ain't nothing. I got stuff to do. But um, <laughs> when it comes to friendships, like, I'm I'm a great friend. But I feel like. I feel like I can be annoying because I know how I am and I'm a pusher and I don't know if that I, you can tell me because you're my friend. I don't know. This is your moment. This is your one and only time you can be honest because don't be honest any other time. But I will. I, <laughs> okay. I, will, I will push you and I will. And I have a little bit of Corey in me. Corey is my dad. And that's funny. I just be, you know, I'll be like, oh, you want to do this? Let's go. We doing this. Like, Let me tell let's y'all go. Something. Let me tell you something. If y'all want to do something and y'all have been wanting to do this for years, I'm just saying you, this is just a little example. Don't tell this chick next to me because it is going to turn from one to do it two years to it being done in the next 24 hours. The thing is, I'll be like to talk about stuff for too long. 
Now, mm-hmm. if we're going to keep talking about it, are we going to do it? That's my mm-hmm. thing. And I don't really care if you random. I don't care about what you're talking about you're going to do. But you my friend and you talking about you want to do something, don't talk to me about it unless you're serious. You already know me. Nope, don't do it. Don't hit you. me up unless you're serious about making a move because I'm going to try to... I'll be on Google, YouTube, Encyclopedia trying to she figure will. out how to make it happen. She will. And I will send you 10 pages on how I found out how yes. to make it happen. She will. <laughs> and a phone number. <laughs> it will. She, get, she might get your email address. The phone number, she, the she email address. Yeah. She, the phone number e- she might can get you the boss's social security number if she look hard enough. Listen, that's the friend. That's the type of friend she is. I personally don't see it as annoying. Um, if people have, they probably told her and that's them. But I personally see it as a push and I need the push sometimes. I've actually, that sh- has actually rubbed off on me to where I push other people now. Like, I'm like, okay, so you want to do this? You want to do this? Okay, we're going to do it. Um, and the reason why I picked that up as a quality is because it's a great quality. I don't care how people see it. If they see it as annoying, oh, well, then befriend me. What do you call it? Befriend me or defriend me. However yeah. you say, don't, we don't yeah. need to be friends because I'm going to be there for you. Like, I'm going to be there. If you say you want to start a singing group. Okay, hold on. If you want to start a singing group. Then I can get you a vocal coach because <laughs> I know one. I know one too. I know a few. We'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. I'm not saying you're going to blow up that fast, but we're going to, I mean, you, we, we can PLC cut you, a, we can cut you one, one single. One good single. That's uh, We're going to get you something going. But also, it's just, it's, it's, but it is, to be serious, it is a good thing. I don't really think that it's a bad thing um, because if it wasn't for you, there's a lot of things that would have not happened yeah. for me personally. You know what I mean? It wouldn't have happened. And Thank we probably you. wouldn't even be friends. <laughs> As close as we are. I don't think so. If it wasn't for me, like, being annoying? No. Stop saying annoying. Pushy. Like, like a a good pushy. Like, I mean, we met in the the workplace and took it further. We met in the workplace and took it further. But if you didn't push me from one department to another. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. We, never, we weren't working in the same department when I met no. Naja. So I was like, girl, you need to work over here with me. And she was like, I can't do that. I said, yes, you can. And right. so I taught her everything I knew. And I made sure she interviewed for the job and got the job. Got it. And that's how like I had that. it. <laughs> and it's just like, and from there, it just went on and on and on. Yeah. And on. Yeah. And on. And so, um, yeah, no, I think as a friend that, you know, both myself and her, like we both love and And we we love love hard. hard. We're not going to be like, we're not that friend. It's just like, all right. Hey, no, if you're a friend, a friend, friend, they know. And it could be the Sagittarius. It could be like the Sagittarius thing we got going on. For those of you who don't know, Naja's birthday is December 4th and my birthday is December 7th. So it's quickly approaching. Um, and I was just going to say, like, as far as friendships go, I don't know if you guys out there have experienced this, but if you're like us, I sometimes can give too much and to where I am, I have like poured myself thin, like I, I, I get, I've poured myself into some people sometimes way too much to where I have nothing else to give mm-hmm. and I have to take a step back until I can get myself back to a place where I'm full again, where I can have enough to pour back into you. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. That is a challenge that we both have. Um, and we both dealt with, with friendships yeah. before, um, is like we poured so much to where we cannot pour anymore into our friendship and it's not being reciprocated. And we're literally, you know drained drained like emotionally mentally physically (laughs) we're drained so yeah that's that's why it's like at this point (laughs) at least i'm speaking for myself at this point in my life i really am (laughs) no more new friends it's just too much i mean i'm just playing i I, I don't mind a few i don't mind a few new friends i just don't as i don't really have a lot of friends but i would like a good like core like group Mm-hmm. Just a good a few. I got like you. <laughs> <laughs> Take that. 
I don't know how to take that to be honest with you. Like no, I got you and a few others. Very few others is what I'm trying to say. But and it's the fact know. that honestly, you don't live near me. And that's what's really breaking our friendship down. If we really want to be honest, it ain't breaking our damn friendship down. It I is just live far. It is. It's far from me. <laughs> you live far from me. So if we just really want to put it all out on the table, like mm-hmm. in front of all these people that's listening, it's your fault that our friendship hasn't, <laughs> hasn't reached the level that it could have reached. We could be having Sunday dinners. We could be like, you know, taking our kids to the parks. We could be having doing rec ball with the children and mm-hmm. all of that. But no, what are we doing together? <laughs> virtually meaning on a podcast because Naja lives way too far. We talk comfort. on FaceTime almost every single day. I don't give a... <laughs> yeah, I, we might you have, to... have to talk on FaceTime if you lived up the street. You could come to my house. That's true, and I will be there. I raised my be... case. When I co- and then if, if, when and if I move out that way, she will be like, go home, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I probably, I mean, I ain't got no problem telling you to go home because I'm a loner. Like, I like being by myself, but I do too, though. I when I want know. friends, I want friends. When I want company, I want company. We might see, we might make that happen. I remember this day. She's lying. <laughs> um, so, moving on. Speaking about these kids. How are you as a mother? What's your role as a mother, as a black mother in America? Uh, why does she have to take it there? <laughs> <laughs> My role as a mother, y'all. So you know how I, as a coworker, I said um, I have to pay attention to detail. So listen, I'm not saying I don't pay much. I don't pay the best attention to detail. Let me tell y'all this. I'm gonna tell y'all a quick little story that happened this past weekend. My daughter had to go to the doctor, like the ER, because she wasn't feeling well, right? Listen up. Myself down. I'm just saying, um, she had told me, she was telling me her stomach hurt. She had said her stomach hurt a few times before. Um, it was just like a pain and a little knot in her stomach. So this last time she was just saying it really, really was hurting like a lot. So we decided to like run her to the ER. And um like she the, come to find out it wasn't nothing super serious. The lump was just like a muscle that was um, tightening her stomach. And she pretty much was like constipated. Like that's what it was. And she kind of like tore her anus a little bit. And I'm like, shoot, she used to always say, mommy, I can't poop or something. I'm like, just drink some water. So I think like me as a mother, I think I'm a great mother. I'm not going to take that away from myself. I think some things I might can pay attention a little bit more to detail. Um, Janae's giving me a look right now. If you guys are not watching us on YouTube, she's giving me this look. And it's almost like, Anaja, shut up. (laughs) But it's just little things like that. Um, I catch myself and then I start feeling super guilty about it. Like, oh, I should have cut a what up. And we might not even be here. Now I got a $200 bill. <laughs> All of the above. And, but I don't know. But I think as a mother, I am super caring. Um, I fuss. I definitely fuss. Um, I think my weakness with being a mother is I need a little bit more patience with my kids. Um, I didn't grow up with a bunch of younger people around like little cousins and stuff like that. So I think I can have a little bit more patience with my five and seven year old. I don't know how you feel about you and yours with patience, but boy is running thin on these two. They don't do nothing but fuss and fight and argue and eat. (laughs) <laughs> I went off into a whole different thing how are you as a mother, how are you as a mother? Gosh, darn. okay so my kids are both five and seven as well um and I want to make sure I say that because I forgot I mean I will forget but what I'm trying to what I want to go back and say as far as whatever you just said about you need to be more attentive to your children blah 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 first and foremost your empath is showing 
And you feeling so terrible about something like that small is what? crazy. You telling your baby to drink water was was a great advice to give. You are not a medical professional. How, no, would, you have, how would you have known that she had a knot in her stomach because she was constipated? Like you would not have known that. You did everything you were supposed to do as a mother. And by taking her to the ER, that was another thing that you, a decision that was made that was the right decision to be made as a mother. So don't be little or downplay anything in that situation because that don't make no sense like at all <laughs> you should not have felt bad about that i know no Be told we'll, me talk, the same thing. we'll talk later i because i can't because I, I i can't but that should not have made you feel oh my god i'm not doing a great job as a mom i need to pay more no you did exactly what you were supposed to do you took care of your child i tried okay okay hey. that's all i'm gonna say about that <laughs> until I get on you a little bit later but um as far as me um what you're a great mama just hush what I'm a good <laughs> mom um uh, your question was about my patience I think all moms patients are running thin I think every child is on their um, mom's last nerve. I think that's just the way that life goes. Um, However, um, Mm -hmm. I think I can do better at a lot of different things as being a mom. Like my challenges come from me. um, It's time spent for me, like intentional time, intentional time spent with my kids. Mm-hmm. like taking them individually and talking to my son like hey son what's going on let's talk what are your interests I know you like Spider-Man okay like you know like like just talk like having dialogue mm-hmm. and to just really like give him his time and then going to my daughter and giving her her time and like and then coming together as a family doing more intentional time spent together because obviously we eat together obviously like we I mean I know I, I play with my kids but I don't play with them a lot because it's only so many times I want to play uno it's only so many times I want to play with them barbies um and I don't I don't want to pretend with the barbie dream house no more I don't want to do that it's mm-hmm. I, I want them to do what I want to do. And <laughs> they don't want to do what I want to do. Right. So I, I have to do a better job at just like meeting them at their level where they are and showing them that I care and showing them that I'm interested in the things that they're interested in right. and then letting them be able to get things off their little chest if they have something they want to talk about. Yeah. And my mom used to do a really, really good job at this. Um, and I will probably implement it sometime when my kids are older. But we used to have family meetings. So like if she dubbed the Sunday family meeting day, then on Sundays we will sit at the table. We'll go like, we'll talk. Okay, so Janae, what you got going on? What's on your mind? Cornelia, what do you have going on? What's on your mind? We talk about things. And mm-hmm. granted, we were in a house full of women. So it was easier to talk about feelings and emotions and things we got going on. But Mm -hmm. I think allowing that space for the kids intentionally, I think um, it's something I need to do a better job at. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, I know my kids often ask us for family night. Like they're like, can we have family night? Can we have family night? Can we play some games? Can we have family night? They definitely, definitely love that. Um, And when we do, it makes their day. Um, They love to go out to eat like little restaurants, which I have done. We have done that since they were little. We always took them out to eat um, whenever we go out because we wanted them to learn how to act when they go out in public. So we take them a lot of places. But the thing is, they definitely love in like my son loves being at home. Like he, I think he just loves being with his things. Like he loves being with his trucks. He loves being with his game system. And 
they're big toy kids. So they always want to play. They're like, mommy, can we play? Daddy, can we play? Um, as far as my family, when it came to them parents, and we did do family meetings, we probably didn't do them as much as you guys. Um, but we definitely ate every Sunday. We ate together at the table. Four chairs at a table, we definitely ate together. Um, that was something we did when we, especially when we got a little bit older. Um, but as far as an a bun- like a whole bunch of family meetings, we probably didn't have them as as many. We usually only had them my mama before. was really like a corporate mom. <laughs> <laughs> no, my parents weren't. And it and it spilled over to yeah. home. We weren't corporate. <laughs> My parents are not <laughs> corporate at all. They, but no, and that's good. That's actually really good. And I'm going to start doing it. I am definitely going to start doing stuff like that more. And then even like you said, I told, I told D this plenty of times. Like, okay, you need to take Soleil out on a date. I need mm-hmm. to take you out. You need to show her how to act. I need to show him how to act with a woman. Um, and even though they're young, they still need to know. Mm-hmm. Because people start judging our kids very early and i'm not trying to throw no black and white thing in there but at the end of the day they are black kids and people are going to judge them from the time that they are born until the end of time so i have to teach them you know as much as i can but yeah i definitely i definitely want to do more family stuff with them and um like you said take that time out it's on only so many baby doll heads i can comb to janae and so many cars i can drive across the floor my knees bad. I, I just I'm don't want to do it. I mean, and I'd be like, I want to be like, why do you think I had your sister? Right. Why do you think I had two of y'all? So y'all could play together. It wasn't just because I just wanted to play with y'all all the time. I had no. y'all two for a reason. Two of y'all for a reason. Play together. Both of, have you, and, and I know yours like, earlier than mine because your boy is a little early, a little older than my girl. But even though they're seven, both of our seven-year-olds are a little teenagerish. Like, I know Jason's, he, like I said, Jason's doing it a little bit earlier. Now, Soleil is so, she's acting teenagerish. Like, stay out of my room. I don't know. And I'm like, what? Yeah, like, I don't want to play with you right now. I want to play by myself. And, and I'm like, What? And then, then the little ones are, they just looking pitiful. And I'm like, yeah, my little one be like, I don't know why you don't play with me. I don't know. And I'm like, and I'm like, nah. right, look, what, <laughs> how do you handle that? Cause I just be like, look, they just, he don't want to play with you right now. That's pretty much the same thing. I think <laughs> I don't make him play with her. Like, cause then if he play with her and he don't want to, it's going to turn into a disaster. Yes. And so, and Phoenix is so mommy, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. And I'm like, can I come in there with you? And I'm like, no, but then I can't say no, because then I, I don't know. Then they're lonely and upset. And, and I want to be alone. And I want to be alone too. So me and Soleil want to be alone. <laughs> <laughs> like man, hmm. Hmm. being a mom is hard. It's challenges, y'all. Come on, y'all. Somebody give us some advice on this. Yeah, help us out. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> I mean, I feel like once our kids hit like ten and twelve, it'll be a little bit easier. Or maybe mm-hmm. twelve and fourteen, they'll be a little bit easier. And I'm I'm hoping for ten and twelve. I, I mean, I feel like we'll have different struggles, but th- I, there'll be easier struggles. Is what I'm hoping for. Yes, ma'am. I'm hoping we've it made it this far. We all we can do is keep going. There's no turning back now. None. None. Now, when they hit them hormones, you, you know, I take that back. It might get a little rough out here, but um, we really need advice on that jump sheesh you know how sometimes like you know people our age they had their kids when they was in high school why didn't we do that <laughs> i'd be thinking that like, like, oh i should have did that what was i thinking okay. i could have these kids almost out my house my friends got kids in high school my dude like dang they're about to graduate in a few years and we still almost wiping butts pretty much <laughs> i ain't gonna talk about that right now that's a whole different story we'll talk about that off camera <laughs> but yeah but even as a mother like well how do you feel as a wife what is your role and how do you f- <laughs> the way she flipped her hair though as a wife <laughs> talk to me sis 
Girl, when I tell you, and I'm not just making this up when I say, but I am a great wife. Hallelujah. And now I got some areas in re- of improvement. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I I got some areas in which I can improve upon, but I feel like I am a, a really good wife though, for real, for real. And being a wife and a mom, and not to just throw in color, but being a black wife to black sons and daughters and a black husband, it is hard out here in these streets. Because, like, I will go places sometimes, and this ain't got nothing to do with nothing, but this is just an example. Like, I will go somewhere with Andrew, and sometimes he'll, his tone sometimes can be off, and, like, he'll try to, like, if somebody did him away, he might go to, like, say something, and I'm like, mm, I'm going to need you to reel that back in, because how you say it is going to come off wrong, and we don't need these problems out here. Like, Mm -hmm. and then I'm going to have to, you know, you know, it's just, it's a lot you have to deal with, 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 uh, with these men. But I feel like I do a really great job of, um, being a good support system for my husband. I feel like I do a great job at, um, just, um, encouraging him. And giving him a soft place to land on. I know we talk about that a lot. Mm-hmm. And just pushing him when I need to. Um, like really pushing him when I need to. And just kind of like keeping him in check. Because I feel like as a woman, sometimes it's it can get hard balancing the house and the kids and all of that. And then also on top of balancing the house and the kids, making sure your husband is satisfied mentally, physically, emotionally, in all of the areas that they need. Um, And it's a lot on our shoulders. And I know sometimes it can get exhausting, but Mm -hmm. it does help when you have somebody that is reciprocating those things back to you. Right. But a wife, man, like it's so much I can say about it because you as a wife within itself you have different roles it has its own it's a whole different thing you gotta be a therapist you gotta be a counselor you gotta be um a coach you gotta be a freak (laughs) you gotta be everything a homemaker you like you gotta be a secretary assistant you gotta like it's so many hats just in that in in wife in the title wife mm-hmm. that you wear financial advisor like I mean it's so many things that you kind of like that we balance and sometimes I don't think they realize how much we do um yeah I, I agree there's a lot there are so many different hats we wear as a wife like that's a whole that's a whole topic in itself um so it's just yeah you have to be there like I mean and you sign up for that I mean even in your vows that's what it says you know I'm saying you got to be there with them through thickness and sickness and health thickness and health I said for richer or poor hold on now I was gonna get there calm down through thickness and thinness and (laughs) no I'm just playing but yes in sickness and health like uh it's it's gonna be hard like there's gonna be hard times um when it comes to being a wife like I said we're speaking from a woman's perspective so I can't speak from a male's perspective but I do know as a wife what we do um putting a wife and a mother together you know we are doing we are handling the kids we are handling them. We are handling our jobs. You know, some people, you know, don't have all of this, but you we're handling so many different things. And then we're still, like you said, we still got to come home and we still got to be counselor and great in the bed and 
make sure the house is clean, make sure dinner is cooked. You know what I mean? And I mean, if you choose to be a wife who don't care about certain things like that, then, um, you know, you, ain't got you know, there was a big debate about cater to you and how they wanted to take the song cater to you. They said cater to you by destiny. Child was yeah. Like um, it was degrading to women and whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't my- know nobody who don't want to, cater to their man especially if your man is good to you why would i not be good to him who who said that they want to scratch that the uh me too movement one of the movements obviously it was them they don't have all their marbles anyway i don't care i'm a woman and i'll tell you that the me too movement don't have all their marbles i don't care i said it and and Come for me, gosh darn it. No, but I mean, I know they have great. I know I can understand them saying that. No, I can't. Nope. I, nope, I can't. I was about to say something. The words. Let me cater to you because maybe this is your day. They didn't say year, month. This is your day. Um, It was the verse. Go ahead and say what you're going to say because I'm going to no, tell you what the verse is. Tell me the verse. I need to know the verse so I can comment because you know I'm going to comment. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what they said in the song. This is what this is what got everybody so um so hype. I just wanna I don't wanna um misquote it. Cause I don't know. Because I'm singing the song and I'm singing Michelle part. I don't know why that's the part I chose to sing. <laughs> okay. Not the first verse. Um I think it was the second verse. Who is that, Kelly? Are you sure? It's so funny. Uh, but whatever, why is she looking for that? I'm going to just say, um, I mean, I don't I don't feel like it's, I mean, maybe it is something in this song that sparked people to feel like it's degrading to women. I just don't see it. Okay, okay, okay. First verse. Babe, I see you working hard. Want to let you know I'm proud and you know I might wish you do. Okay. So it wasn't that one. It was something about, oh, oh, it was this part. It was in the first verse. My life would be purposeless without you. They didn't like that. There was like, why would my life have purpose? Why would my life not have purpose because of a man? They were saying because of their particular man. I I say to my husband, I'll talk about, oh, I don't know where I'll be without you. Or I just love my life. I don't want to imagine my life without you. I say that shit all the Oh, shoot. I say that mess all the time. <laughs> say what you got to say, friend. I'm just like, I mean, they're not saying without men in general. They're just um, the whole, let me help you take off your shoes, untie your shoestrings, take off your cuff links. Once you want to eat, boo, let me feed you. Let me run your bath water with every desire I supply you. Sing you a song, turn my game on. I brush your hair, help you put your do-rag on. Want a foot rope? Do you want a manicure? Baby, I'm yours. I want to cater to you. I think they, they I, first of all, the woman in 2021 is different from the woman back in oh, my day. I mean, I was born in that old. And I'm not even that old, but Mm -hmm. I'm telling you these women today. And I think that's why it's so hard for men to find a woman be not because the men ain't trash either. Cause there's some trash men out there too, but I'm just talking about these women, like these women. They're on a whole different level. It's hard to be with a woman who. It's let me see. I'm trying to see if how your man is good to you. Like your man is good to you. What makes you not want to be like, babe, I have your dinner ready. I have, I mean, I'm not saying be a slave. No, that's two totally different things. But I, what I'm saying is it's showing appreciation. It's showing you care. It's showing you love them. It's showing. Listen, don't let this me too movement have you single the rest of your life. If I can't have you, I just be saying. Yep. I mean that that song. They probably find that offensive too. Yeah, definitely would. Anyway, we got our topic, but <laughs> I'm 
glad we got on that topic because I ain't know. I, I think I heard something about it, but I never. Yeah, even... at one point they wanted to cancel that whole song, girl, because they ain't agree with that. And I'm like, y'all, who hurt y'all? Because y'all hurt. They hurt, and I feel bad for them. They can come talk to me, and I, I help them. I don't mind. I want to help some people. I can understand women empowerment. Don't get me wrong. I definitely understand that because as a woman, I want to be powerful, and that's something that I always wanted to do was have power behind my behind me in point blank period. That that's it. But it, it's some people just take things a little too far, and that's just my opinion. You can hate me, love me, I don't care. But um. As a wife, you know, y'all, let me tell y'all something. We just kind of like took you into our lives, like as a coworker, sister, daughter, friend, mother, and now a wife. But Janae, you got to let these people know we're going to allow them in our life for the whole month of December. Oh, my God. Okay, yes. So for you guys who don't know, which you don't know because this is our first time telling you (laughs) that. So we are doing Vlogmas, okay? So Vlogmas is something that we do on YouTube. It's something that the YouTube community does. And we have decided to embark on this journey where we will be vlogging every single day for 25 days in December. So every single day, you're going to see content from us um, for 25 days and starting December the 1st. And I'm excited about Vlogmas. You're going to kind of get a sneak peek into our lives, what we're doing, and all of these hats that we wear. You're going to get to see those firsthand. Um, we'll be doing, we'll just be doing like daily vlogs. So you'll get to see what's happening on the day to day, what's not happening on the day to day. Some behind the scenes of Wine After Wine's podcast as well. And, um, yeah, super excited. So make sure if you aren't following us on YouTube that you subscribe to us on YouTube and make sure your post notification bell is on so that you know every time that we post. I don't know the time of day that we're going to post every day. Um, and I don't want to give you all the time and then it don't be that time. So but if you have on your post notifications, it doesn't matter what time of day we post because you'll just get a bing that we posted. <laughs> That's exactly what I was about to say. She took it away. <laughs> yes. So um, we hope you guys have enjoyed this show today. And we're really uh, glad that you came back to listen. Let us know in the comments anything that you want us to talk about. Um, we do have some interviews coming up for y'all soon. We're just kind of ironing out some kinks. But stay tuned for those as well. And again, watch our blogs for Vlogmas and go to our website. The link is on going to be in the description below. Um, Naja wrote a great blog uh, the other day pertaining to, I'm not even going to tell you, I just go and let, read it. <laughs> and <laughs> go go read it. And um, yeah, we love y'all. Follow us on our social media platforms. Remember to like, comment, subscribe and share to all your people and we'll see y'all next week for Blackmas. She's so silly. (laughs) Thank y'all. Bye. Bye.